Officially speaking, the vault tech vaults were made to protect Americans from a nuclear annihilation. The government and vault tech never really believed an actual nuclear war would occur. The real reason for the existence of these vaults was to run social experiments on pre-selected segments of the population to see how they would react to the stresses of isolation and how successfully they would recolonize the earth after the vaults opened. And oh boy, were there ever some experiments. Number 6, Vault 77. Vault 77's experiment was strange to say the least. Inside the vault was only one man and a crate of puppets. The experiment was to test the effects of near total isolation with the puppets being his only source of company. The Vault 77 dweller, later known as the Puppet Man, entered the vault on October 23rd, 2077, when the Great War began. At the one hour mark, he was pounding on the vault door and shouting to anyone who might be listening that they had forgotten all other vault dwellers. By March 23rd, 2078, he had been reduced to sitting in front of the vault door and sobbing. On February 4th, 2079, he discovered and began to inspect the crate of puppets. By October 23rd, he had begun to act out simple scenes with these puppets, and by March 30th, 2079, he had created full roles and histories for all of them. The dog puppet was named Reverend Hound, and serving both as sheriff and part-time reverend and another grandmother puppet, which he later named Grandma. He celebrated the birthday of the king with Grandma on this day. But before going to bed, a vault boy puppet that he'd missed began to talk to him, probably the side effects of isolation and a descent into insanity, which the other puppets did not. One morning in 2079, the king was found dead, its head torn off by an act of regicide. When the puppet man confronted the most likely suspect, the vault boy puppet told him that they had, in fact, done it together and must flee before Reverend Hound came for them. The puppet man accompanied the vault boy puppet, opened up the vault door, which for some reason was no longer locked, only to find a giant rat scorpion holding up a car in each claw. Faced with this, he decided to sleep on it before proceeding. By December 2079, the puppet man had managed to leave Vault 77 along with the vault boy puppet and a giant ant which he takes as his mount into the wasteland. Vault 77 was thereafter abandoned. Number 5, Vault 11. Vault 11's experiment was to test whether or not people would sacrifice themselves for their fellow man. In this experiment, the inhabitants of Vault 11 were told that they must sacrifice one of their fellow vault dwellers each year, and that should they refuse, all of the dwellers would be killed. In actuality, if the residents refused, an automated solution response was supposed to be played. The message stated that by choosing not to select one of their own as a sacrifice, the dwellers are a shining example of humanity, and that no one would be killed. They are also informed that the vault door is then unlocked so they can come and go as they please, but are urged to consult with their overseer before they do so. However, by the time Vault 11 inhabitants refused to continue sacrificing their own dwellers, only five survivors remained. Evidence gathered from a computer terminal throughout the vault attests that the vault residents were required to select an annual sacrifice from among their members. Therefore, at the end of the overseer's term of office, the overseer was required to enter the chamber below the overseer's office to be executed by the vault's computers. The computer did not require that the sacrifice had to be the overseer, but if a sacrifice was not selected, the computer controlling the vault would kill them all. Of the original residents, only the overseer had entered the vault knowing about the yearly sacrifice. The residents of the vault, in their shock and anger at discovering this after having been sealed inside the vault, selected the original overseer, whom they viewed as having betrayed them all, as their first sacrifice. This decision would marry the positions of overseer and sacrifice until all of the inhabitants were dead. Number 4, Vault 106. Vault 106 experiment was very simple. Psychoactive drugs were released into the air filtration system 10 days after the door was sealed. The drug should affect some, but not all of the residents. This is evidenced by the note to anyone who gets this, which was apparently written by someone who was not affected. It seems as though the drug sparked violence in those they affected, resulting in the insane killing of everyone else in the vault, leaving only a few survivors. The insane survivors present seem to be unlucky wastelanders and raiders who managed to get into the vault and were overpowered by the still potent drugs into thinking that they were vault dwellers. Proof of this is that none of the inhabitants of the vault have pit boys on their arms. Information in the vault's computer terminals reveals that the overseer knew that the inhabitants of his vault would be fodder for drug testing, and he instructed his security personnel to tell those in the vault that everything was fine at first. At the very end of the vault is a cave-like area where skeletons and other items are located, including a mini-nuke suggesting that some of the vault dwellers may have been trying to blow their way out of the vault. Number 3, Vault 108. Vault 108 is home to perhaps the greatest man or men in the Capital Wasteland, Gary. 
Fault 108's experiment was to study conflict and power in a vault. The first overseer had a rare form of cancer that was expected to kill him within 40 months of the experiment's start. The vault's power supply was scheduled to malfunction after 20 years, while the vault was scheduled to be sealed for 38 years, with the backup power supply being insufficient to power the vault. On top of all of that, the vault was given three times the normal armory stock, but no entertainment recordings. This vault also contained a cloning lab. Gary, one of the original inhabitants of the vault, somehow got cloned. Whether he cloned himself or someone cloned him isn't clear. There's a hollow disk found in the cloning lab that hints about the fate of Vault 108. Every time Gary was cloned, it immediately became hostile to non-clones, with each one becoming more and more violent. After the 53rd clone was no different, the staff began to wonder what to do with all of the clones, as the vault's observation rooms were becoming full. The other entry in the holodisc says that Gary54 was the same way, having injured Dr. Peterson during an examination. After the overpopulation of all the Garys, the staff decided to try to kill off some of them to reduce the population. The Garys did not like this, and so they revolted, killing all of the non-Garys in the vault. And for whatever reason, the only word they know how to say is Gary. Number 2. Vault 87 Vault 87 was a forced evolutionary virus research and testing facility. In 2078, the original inhabitants of Vault 87 were taken into airtight chambers and exposed to a concentrated form of forced evolutionary virus, also known as FEV. Evidence suggests that the Overseer and his security guards were not aware of the Force Evolutionary Virus's true nature, but were simply following orders from vault Tech. When the first dwellers were turned into super mutants, they in turn forcibly mutated the others, until the remaining population was either mutated or killed. Vault 87 super mutants are obsessed with the preservation of their brand new species. Since they are all still sterile, they kidnap humans from all over the capital wasteland and bring them into the vault to be mutated. They have been doing this for nearly 200 years, until the source of the FEV started to run out. Because of the shortage of the green stuff, there are now mutant bands searching all over the capital wasteland for a new source of the virus. Number 1. Vault 75 The experiment in Vault 75 is all about human genetics. The goal was to alter the genetics of their subjects to create stronger and more intelligent superhumans. Vault 75 is located underneath Malden Middle School and presented to the public as a safe place for children in the school to take cover in the event of a nuclear war. In fact, when the war began in 2077, the children, with their designated families and teachers, entered the vault in time. But while all of the children were escorted to the atrium, the adults were separated and killed by vault security. The purpose of this vault was to enhance the gene pool of its selected residents to create stronger and more intelligent subjects. The surviving children were tested mentally and physically as part of the experiment. If they were intelligent and physically well built, they were either harvested for their good genes when they turned 18, or they were recruited to the vault science team after graduation. Some others who were not up to the vault standards could be allowed to join the general staff if allowed so by the overseer. The others who were deemed insufficient to the vault standard were killed upon reaching the age of 18 prior to graduation. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video about the 6 most fucked up vaults in Fallout. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it or didn't learn anything. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 video about any game or game character. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.